Sambico. I'm alone, as usual, with my coffee and a drink. There, where the dusk hugs round the headland, it begins to sink its long reptilian snout into the fading mists of light, as evening's drifting purple mantle puts the day to flight. The island birds are silent, a deserting soundless choir. In silhouette, the ancient fortress dons its night attire. Beneath its shoulder, twin lights stab like cat's eyes through dark trees, and yonder, joined at the horizon, sea and grey skies freeze. Out into a shoebox yard some forty feet below, the bag of bones infirmity that is yet Sambico is wheeled out to be placed in the embrace of a white chair, and left there to be gazed at by the diners on the square, flat roof of this taverna where bazooki music plays out echoes of a lifetime through Sambico's dwindling days. The frozen-featured Buster Keaton face, hewn at by drink, stares blank and flatly, motionless, with neither nod nor wink, pitch black against the dazzle of the white shirt like a shroud, the oracle sits petrified before the buzzing crowd. A waiter yells a greeting, and an arm like a white post is stiffly hoisted skywards in a silent, priestly toast. The limb falls back, the body will not move again today. It sits as still as sleeping dog rock there across the bay. Days dwindle down to when the shoebox courtyard will be bare. No more will sit Sambico mute and rigid in his chair. He will not hear that two-kilometre-an-hour approach. He will not fear the coming of the polished oblong coach, that dread and heavy slow roll as it makes its first last call, that tires on gravel sound within a stone's throw of us all.